Johnny and James. They are easily led. Welcome back to Easy Led, the miniature wargaming podcast that will make you want to pick up your paintbrush and finish that long forgotten army. I'm Johnny from Johnny Watson Gaming and I am with James from Scruffy Crow. James, how are you doing? Uh, well, well, Johnny. Good, uh, good. Welcome to episode four. Episode four. We are cracking on with these episodes. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, James, please give us the lowdown of what is happening tonight, mate. Uh, so the title of this episode is going to be Unsupported. There's a question. Uh, yeah. And it's going to be talking about, does it matter if uh, the game you're playing or a game is sort of officially supported, community supported, or, you know, where does that leave you? Sort of some of the uh, some of our thoughts on that kind of topic. Yeah. Uh, but I've, as ever, we'll start off with anything we've noticed different this week and end on a recommendation. Uh, Perfect. As that has worked so far, as a uh, yeah, thing. yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So, James, then without further ado, then should we jump straight into the news and uh, get this show under the way? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, one thing I wanted to mention this week was the uh, was North Star. I've seen them posting a few things recently on Facebook, uh, including they've done some sneaky reveals of their latest Oathmark plastic kit, which is going to be the Light Dwarves. Uh, which were a bit special because you don't often see dwarf models without loads of armor on. Uh, these guys are wearing just cloth and, and leather, I guess, and they've got bows or uh, double-handed weapons. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to these. Um, are they, they're not out yet, are they, or are they? No, no, they're not out yet. I don't not think yet. there's even a release date on them yet. But right, um, okay, they, they're the next one in line. Uh, so it's interesting to see them appear. Uh, yeah, I mean, all the North Star miniatures so far have been absolutely lovely, so I'm I'm sort of hoping good things for these. Oh, I'll, I'll at least pick up a, a sprue of them to have a play around with, even if I don't buy mm. a box. Also, North Star have been uh, previewing some stuff for Silver Bayonet, which is the the new game from Joe McCullough, which is a it's Napoleonic horror, so it's another sort of alternate history. Yeah, it's these thing. sort of things, this sort of Napoleonic horror, obscure thing, sort of taken. It's been quite popular recently with well, got... with Turnip and Sludge, or is it Sludge? I think it's called. I think this is a lot more grounded than Turnip and Sludge, which are going to be more fantasy and sort of that blanditchy, like grimy right. look. I think um, Silver Bayonet is going to be very much more like sharp with werewolves. Right. Okay. Okay. So it's I mean, it's still going to be obscure though. With it's, you know, it is fantasy or sci-fi yeah, or whatever. Yeah, you might want to call alt, it, but... alt history. Yeah, it's going to be that sort yeah. of thing. Um, yeah. Nice. Nice. But you can. Yeah, it should be interesting. And they've released the first uh, sort of previews of the the first batch of the minis. To be honest, individually sculpt wise, they're nice minis. As a game, it's probably not going to grab me though, uh, just because the time period doesn't really uh, appeal too much. I don't know what you're thinking on that one. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Um, it might be one game too many for this myself. <laughs> uh, but, but I mean, the, like you say though, just for picking up a mini the miniatures and painting them, yeah, definitely. Um, I may not play the game, but I I would certainly be interested in picking up a couple of miniatures and just have give put some paint on them. Uh, without without doubt, they do look really nice. I mean, hopefully they come out as nice as they look on their renders that they've put out so far. I don't think they're render. I think they're hand sculpt. So oh, are they really okay? Yeah, yeah, for the, the for the silver bayonet stuff. Yeah, nice, cool. nice. All so, right, uh, main topic yeah. then. Yeah, let's uh, do it. Does it matter if a game is supported? So, I wanted to sort of outline this: what I mean by supported. Yeah, uh, please I, do. Yeah, I mostly mean officially by the original author or publisher, and with sort of new releases and miniatures, all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm we're going to mention sort of community support. Uh, but that when I really when I say is a game supported, I mean by the original manufacturer author. Yeah, do, does does the company or author um, continue either bringing out supplements to the game or uh, or models and this sort of things? That that's basically what you're 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 alluding to here. Yeah, yeah, that's my main sort of thought. And I think, I mean, it sounds like a quite nitpicky sort of definition and stuff, but I think it makes a big difference. So. Um, cool. I'm going to talk no, about. No, it does. I, it, it definitely does actually, because well, we'll, again, we'll come into that a little bit later. So yeah, yeah. I, I was going to talk about a couple of reasons uh, why 
a game might not be supported to start with. Um, yeah, so one different. of them would be uh, new additions. So there's a whole bunch of reasons why you'd make a new addition to a game. Um, I Personally, I think there's certain games, I think Oathmark is really going to come into its own if it gets a second edition. Um, I think you can, you've got a game, you get all this play testing, you get a community built up around it, you can kind of yeah. learn what was good, what was bad. Um, all the releases and supplements, if you've made them, that have come out since it was first released. So I'm also thinking Frostgrave here. I'm sorry, I'm so... My mind's in Joe games at the moment. but um, <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah. No, uh, so Frostgrave can... second edition covered a load of stuff that was in all the different little supplements and yeah. bound yeah. it all back into one big, one big I, book. I, I... And I mean, the master at this is obviously GW. Um, so having their games and they, whether you agree that they are better or or worse, um, they bring out the new editions, um, which quite often uh, take into account sort of all the erratas and stuff that happened during the last edition. And sometimes they can change it all to, completely altogether. Um, but yeah, so, you know, companies do, I do mean, this. Yeah, Warhammer Fantasy is a good example of that. I think they they were trying to fix the game ever since sixth, I mm. think. Uh, since I started playing, they've always been, each edition it was an attempt to fix something, and I always likened it to like an old car that, you know, they kept trying to make these uh, uh, fixes on. Just the whole thing was getting a bit worn out. Yeah, so, just getting bought bo together. But have, I mean, and they should have probably just stripped it all down and started, you know, started again. Yeah. And, they, and they did, to be honest. And I complained about that too. So, <laughs> so I mean. But I mean, other reasons that you may find a new edition would be uh, purely because the company might want to make a bit of money. Um, look, we, we were talking about this off air. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a bit of a pessimistic bit more way of cynical. looking at things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, a company, yeah, these guys are private companies. They want to make money. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes, um, you know, uh, maybe a bolt ons to one particular game isn't isn't going to cut it, and, and they need to start from the ground up again uh, to really bring that revenue in. So that that's also another reason. Um, I mean, if you want to get really reason. cynical, you could say talk about invalidating old models and yeah, yeah, and the need to yeah. buy oh, new definitely. stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, God, I mean, we see GW do that all the time. Um, yeah, definitely, that, that's almost certain. So. Yeah, and I mean, I think there's also, if you're going to do a new edition, there's also a, a chance for a big release as well. You can make it like a landmark thing. You could be like, oh, there is a new version. Uh, we're going to mention it later, but War Machine Third, we all went out and bought. We all had big War Machine armies, mm -hmm. but then we all went out and spent another thirty quid buying a the new rules, but also like new starter boxes and stuff. So, yeah, um, you know, we, we we all spent money that we didn't that we already invested in the game in a way. And we bought, the, the, yeah, because it was like an event. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, the problem with new editions brings in this 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 conundrum of: is the old edition better than the new edition? And do you? Because then, now, I mean, going back to the title of this conversation, as soon as a new edition comes out, the old edition is no longer supported, just by definition. Yeah. Yeah, which is why I was um, including that as a, one of the reasons. Yeah, mm, yeah. Now, for, for myself, um, I'm recently going back to my childhood, like I say, I've just mentioned earlier, and getting back into 40k second edition. Mm -hmm. Now, in my opinion, uh, and it's definitely warped through my of my childhood. For me, that is by far the best edition. It's the edition that has the right aesthetics for me, the colours. The appearance of the models, uh, the the rule set as well is a bit more in depth. Um, it's not quite as bad as Road Trader, but it's certainly a lot more complex than, um, say, third or and going on through up to the new editions now. Um, so I enjoy I enjoy that about it. So I I now look at I look back at that thinking that's the, that was the best edition, um, and all the rest of. <laughs> Oh, rubbish <laughs> but but that's just my opinion um other people would will will always uh welcome a new edition and want to get in there and and learn every single minute detail about the new edition and not even uh, and they'll just throw the old editions in the in the bin i've say, literally oh, seen it i've literally seen yeah raw books in yeah. in the trash because that was that was the last oh, edition yeah. 
It's dead yeah, to us now. I, I, I'm not going to play that ever again. It was last edition. You know, oh, it's rubbish. Or or uh, just don't, you know, that, that's not what they that that particular company supports anymore. Which, in my opinion, is is crazy. Um, I, th- I, I, I really am of the opinion, if you found an edition that you enjoy, you should stick to it. And uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't. Yeah. I mean, there's a positive to that, though. I mean, I at Salute a few years ago, I picked up... Uh three or four old war machine books um yeah. for like a couple of quid each well this is it yeah and they're oh, full yeah. of full of fluff and story that i had been following so uh, it, it, that, that does depend on what game you're playing oh yeah, yeah um i'm having a different i'm having a different experience now with the second edition stuff picking the stuff up on ebay on for second edition 40k is actually really expensive now is that because people there is a an overarching uh belief that maybe that was a great addition and people want those models yeah it's generally they become i think it's 50 50 nostalgia that, that, that yeah i think it's 50 50 nostalgia and rarity because these things are, have been around for a while now a bunch of yeah. people would have a bunch of people have got out of the hobby since since they bought them and thrown them in the trash a bunch, yeah. a bunch of people threw them in the trash when the third edition came out um mm. yeah you know they're they're, they're Fairly fragile items of book, really, if you think about it in some ways. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, there's this. They're not anymore being made, so it is a rarity. Uh, I think you see the same in fantasy. So, so the older books are obviously rare. You can you get less likely to get a nice quality one. Uh, and then as they get, so seventh edition are probably the cheapest ones because it's not seen as a as a properly nostalgic edition, really. Um, yes. But at the same time, it was only a few years ago, and um, and there's, pl- there's you know still plenty of them around. Whereas the eighth edition books are really expensive because technically they're still current in a way. Um, are they really? I mean, I, yeah, I suppose they are because people. If you was to play, um, if you was if you just came out of playing uh, Warhammer and you, our AOS has taken over, I suppose AF edition is, is essentially the last edition of yeah. Warhammer. Yeah. I've, I've heard of people, I, I know of at least one group who basically have, were playing 8th edition um, and then just never stopped. That was it. That's their game. Um, that's what they play. And there wasn't a new edition, so... They've just they've just carried on playing eighth edition, and they've managed to recruit new guys that have never played war games before, who then just that's it. They they've just played eighth edition. Um, so yeah, I think there's there's definitely a bigger demand for eighth edition books than there is seventh edition books. But then when you go back again to sixth edition, when the books have got a bit more charm and they've got a bit more nostalgia, yeah. um, even though there's probably not that much fewer of them around, the the price jumps back up a little bit. Yeah, no, definitely. And then once you definitely. get before sixth edition, obviously the books were a sort of different. You know, they were a lot rarer in the back in the day anyway, because they didn't release one every edition after that. Before that, and yeah, they're all over the place. So then it gets rarer and rarer as you go back. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, how how do you where do you sit with this, James? I mean, do, are are you someone who when when a new edition comes out, you, you're someone who says, "Now I'm going to play the new edition," and I'm going to put the old edition to one side and never touch it again or are you someone who's very much um well i enjoyed this edition so i'll probably keep keep with this and won't even worry about the new edition see certainly not initially because i think for instance like i started i said i think oathmark uh will come you know will yeah. be good i think it could benefit from a second edition so if if in i don't know I, certainly not soon so two or three years time or whatever five years well five years from when it was came out if uh, Osprey said, right, we're going to do Oathmark second edition, we're going to stick everything we learned in the book, fix fix what we think you know could work better. I think the magic system could possibly have a little bit more spice to it, for instance. You know, yeah. whack that in a book. Uh, I would have that pre-ordered and I'd be... I certainly wouldn't throw my old book away, but that's possibly because I'm a hoarder. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you definitely are a hoarder. I can vouch for that. Um, but I would, I would, you know... I'd move the the current Oathmark book down into my uh, down down a shelf, and the new <laughs> Oathmark book would go on the on the uh, on the in a, the active. I play, I play, yeah, yeah, I play game shelf, yeah, yeah, which I actually have. I actually have separate shelves at the moment for for just <laughs> rule books and rule books that I actually might want to use physically or take somewhere. See so, you now, 
you don't think that oath mark would just better uh, benefit from um you know uh, um additions added onto it rather than not additions sorry sub, um supplements supplements added yeah rather than a whole new edition would 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 it would it work better with just supplements rather than, than a completely whole new edition um because for uh, again, it depends what they do. are it depends i don't think it needs any more uh, the supplements have all added something fairly interesting but I was thinking about this the other day I can't think of any more factions that I particularly want to see without it going too high fantasy but then, but then are you at uh, siege we're, we're, rules we're, we're, people have mentioned we're... siege rules would be quite interesting right, okay. okay so yeah so we're picking on Oathmark here but um, just, we just use this as an example really yeah so if that's what that, that was what was going to my, my, my question was going to be if you're going to do a new, a new edition of a, a game like that what what would you be adding to it? And okay, siege rules, yeah. That, that's... I don't think you'd have to add anything if you. If, if, when I think that Oathmark could come alive in a second edition, I think it'd be more. Uh, there's certain things like some of the movement rules, like the magic. I said the magic rules could do with a bit of spice. I think the movement rules could do with a bit of clearing up because currently, technically, you can like wheel one eighty and like attack people in the the a completely different facing, and that's a legal rule. Um, right. the way you move into combat I actually realised I don't. I think a lot of people are playing it wrong um, let me know in the comments if you've noticed this but technically you can't if you're trying to move into combat with somebody you can only move a move action is a pure straight line and you've got two actions so you can do a like a, a wheel and then a perfectly straight line so you can only make one movement so whereas old fantasy for instance you could wheel more than once as far as i ever knew like bolt yep. action depending on the type of unit you can make a few adjustments to your uh your facing like tanks i mean i'm thinking like vehicles you can yeah you know there's, yep. a, there's a specific set you can turn 90 degrees one way 90 degrees the other sort of thing yep. so yeah whereas in oathmark that's very rigid at the moment and i think they should build wheeling into movement and st i don't know stuff like that after a few years of people playing it would we make different decisions mm. um probably and so yeah that's that's the sort of thing i'm thinking of so i wouldn't say right. that you needed to add anything you just develop the rules yeah now, yeah would that game that you've now developed have everything that we like about the game at the moment and then would people go oh original oathmark is better than this new thing you you, you kind of don't know until you try it i don't but no, anyway that's i think that's enough on on that but that's yeah so older editions i think we've covered why people play older editions and i think yeah they were supported so say you're going to play oh sixth edition now you've actually yep. got the benefit of every single thing that ever came out for sixth edition every model every rule book um Every errata, if you can find them, is all yeah. there. It's done already. I mean, a lot. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this. You get a lot of like fans, fan guys, just um, create websites where they've they've pretty much put everything together, including all the erratas and rules and stuff. So yeah, you can definitely find that sort of thing. So that's a plus side. You've got a very complete game there. You've got like a snapshot of when that game was at its most complete, um, and I think that's quite interesting. Uh, and then obviously the reason why you might so that's yeah you and yeah, the reason why I mean, you might not might be availability though so a lot of the models from sixth edition are now unavailable so if you want to certainly i don't think there's any specific units you couldn't get a hand on and you could use third parties and stuff but you obviously can't yeah. go, you can't go to the shop now and buy a bunch of no. sixth edition empire or bretonian guys you just can't you can't no. Uh, no. and the rule books you have to hunt them out on ebay or that's it, pretty much eBay should probably yeah. be your own. Uh, uh, and the or, same, or, for, the, or same for the miniatures as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's if you wanted to play purely just GW stuff. Um, uh, but but then the, rule, the rule the... books is a tough one, though, because if you wanted a physical big red book, there is a, like we were talking about a second ago, there's only a set number of those in the world at the moment. And mine's not yeah. going anywhere, you know. I, yeah. I've got a few years left in me at the moment, and uh, my red book is stay, staying in with me until... Uh, until the day I die, so that's another one off the market permanently. Mm. Um, no, yeah, definitely. So, how many more? How many 
speed road books that are out there that are going to be available if you wanted suddenly to start playing sixth edition i mean there's yeah, and this is it and this is it with the older these older uh unsupported games now or yeah or at least the the old editions of any game um especially the popular games it's an expensive thing to do if especially if you weren't there back in the day and you didn't and you didn't buy all the models then which most of us didn't because we were all young and we didn't have any money so you know now we're looking back in a, back on those games with 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 rose tinted glasses and nostalgia we want those miniatures okay now we're a little bit older probably got a little bit more uh spending cash but we got, you've got to spend a lot of money yeah and that's that's the biggest problem with them and then whereas you you can think about that for other games though for instance i mean go on ebay and try and find a, a first edition malifaux rule book for instance you probably can't no um you probably can't because there's probably not much of a monetary gain for someone to sell it, so they probably just throw it in the bin. Yeah, I... that's the problem. That's what that that's the that's the truth of it. Um, probably not enough people want. It's you know it's, it's supply and demand, isn't it? Uh, everyone wants to buy the old GW miniatures, but how many people want to buy the old Malifaux miniatures? So if probably you want not to... that many people. Yeah. So if you want to play an earlier edition of a slightly less mainstream game, then you are already going to get challenged. So. It's possibly not even possible for everyone to play older editions of some stuff, unless no, you already which... unless you already played that edition and have got the stuff. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, unless you've got you've you've already got the stuff, then yeah, that's that's great. I mean, that, I mean that rolls us into the next thing, which is, which is indie games. So indie games. So what I meant by that was anything from if you know if we play if we made up a game, which we've which we've had a go at. Mm. Uh, I know certain war games clubs. Um, build their own rules from either scratch or from stuff they found online uh, yeah. to, to see. I mean, I know certain historical groups basically have used a different set of rules depending on uh, what battle they're playing. Um, so even within the same set of miniatures, you know, they'll use different Napoleonic rules depending on what kind of battle they're at. Um, so stuff yeah. like that. I mean, this is, this is completely at the other end of the scale of completely not supported. No, this so, is this is PDFs offline. Uh, yeah, literally yeah. rules written in pen in a in a jar book. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You, uh, War Games Miniatures Magazine, I think it was called. Every week used to put uh, like a little mini game as mm -hmm. a as a kind of like a battle report slash you know mini game in there. So you, stuff like that. Um, but yeah. people enjoy. I personally, I'm not interested in these super small games uh, but a lot of people really do like them well i mean I, for example actually um on my on my channel i did a i did a battle report for um ultra of freedom which is that six mil acw game mm -hmm. and it was it was written by the guy if, if those of you know them um little wars tv it was uh it was written by one of their the guys who run that mm -hmm. youtube channel and um, it's a fantastic, it's an absolutely fantastic game, but it's really only supported by it's a PDF online that you think you might pay like five pound or ten pound for, and that's it. There's, there's literally there's no miniatures for it. There's no, there may be a couple of supplements, uh, like just an extra couple of scenarios, but that's it in terms of battles. Um, but it's really it's proper indie. It's you know you're not going to get anything other than the rule set um but it's a great little game so i you know some sometimes these little indie indie games can be proper little gems um and you only need to buy them once because unlike unlike um companies like gw or or, or um private press uh these these indie games are it's it's the rules are all in just one pack you don't need yeah. to buy a, a, a codex or another army rule book you, you just need that one set of rules and you can play the game. And if they're digital off someone's website or like uh, drive through RPG or something, um, you don't necessarily need new additions much because you can kind of go more down the road of living rule books. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, of course. Definitely. Definitely. And you'll just, yeah, they just update it. If it's not, yeah, if it's not printed yeah. media, you can just update something as and when and, and let people yeah, know yeah. that yeah. there's been an I update. Mean, 
definitely. And and these uns- these this particular kind of unsupported game really is. It's it's like the cheapest end of the scale of getting into gaming. However, you probably would be the someone getting into this sort of thing would be probably a gamer who's quite experienced. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get sort of amateurs that suddenly yeah are going to. No. Uh, the, the the amount of questions you'd have to ask if you just said, All right, hold, there's some PDFs here. Get on with it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, what color do I paint paint them? Where do I get the miniatures from? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not an idiot's guide to playing it. You, and if, you do, you do need. Generally, as a rule, I'm not saying all of these small little games uh, are like this, but definitely, um, as a rule, they are a much more complex game systems, uh, yeah. and they are much more. Um, they're, they're catered to those people who who are experienced and are looking for new. Uh, and fun things to get into yeah um and they, I, the, the books aren't going to have that section that mainstream rule books have which is like yeah. what is a war game you know yeah yeah minute which bit of the miniature is the base yeah yeah no definitely i mean we, we um recently we we got into a game um it's an old game from an early 90s called star grunt you ever heard of that james no no star grunt oh, God, oh was that the cotton. little blobby spaceman yeah, the little um, fifteen. It's a fifteen mil game. I can't remember who it's by. If anyone knows that, please put a comment below and, and say the company. Tell us the company. I can't remember. They've been going. The, the company's been going for ever since the early nineties. But uh, Ground this, Zero start, Games. I think it is. Yes. Yes. It oh, they is. do full thrust as well. And they do full thrust. Correct. Uh, and actually, both of them games. Right. They. They're they're pretty old, but I I would class them as indie games. But my God, is Star Grunt, and it is a complex game. You could you could you could not just be a war game. someone new coming into the game to play that game. It's so complicated, uh, uh, you know. To, to the point, actually, I ha- I haven't I haven't even played a game of it yet because I just get my head around the rules is just insane. Yeah. Um, see, and, and and I've been I've been told I've had um, I've been I've seen quite a few stories that a lot of people, uh, especially back in the day as well, used it instead of 40k. They'd use the 40k miniatures, but use Star Grunt rules. Mm. But uh, a bit of a yeah, apparently a bit of a thing back then. But um, well, that's kind of happening again now. So, uh, one page rules as a sci-fi rule set um, is having a bit of a resurgence. For that sort of thing, uh, mm. grim dark future—that's what it's called. Uh, where people are using those instead of 40k, just because there's more. As far as I understand, I've not looked into it too much, but it's, it's yeah. The, the rules are just a nicer set of rules than current 40k is. So it's... yeah, they're probably a bit. They're probably a bit more in depth. They're probably a little bit more. Um... Well, they'll be written by gamers. I think that'd be the big difference. They'll be yeah. written by gamers for gamers rather than by a, a corporation. Or yeah, for money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, agreed. Yeah. I mean, even so, but, one page rules appear to be making bank at the moment, but 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 that's the beauty of an indie game. You know, you don't have that corporate um, spin on it. Yeah. You know, you, there's no one trying to make mega bucks on it. Yeah, someone might sell their rules for five quid, but they're not going to be millionaires out of it. They're just, they just, they've literally, they've they've come up with with this game because they love the hobby. And they want to be creative uh, and create a game, uh, and yeah, like I say, it's, uh, some of the, sometimes these games, I mean, they can be fantastic. It's just finding them. Yeah. that's the hard thing. Well, talking about finding them is the, the bit I wanted to mention was the Osprey Blue Books. Uh, if people aren't aware of these, uh, there's games like uh, Lion Rampant, which is a historical skirmish, uh, yeah. which spawned Dragon Rampant, which is a fantasy skirmish. I mean, Lion uh, Rampant at the moment. Lion Rampant at the moment is quite popular within the historical side of things. There's been a couple of big YouTubers getting yeah. into that, and they've been pushing it quite a bit. And Dragon Rampant was doing a good job of trying to. It was actually pulling people the other direction again, pulling historical games into fantasy. Weirdly enough, um, I saw that a few yeah. examples of that. Because um, you could basically use your Lion Rampant army and just whack a dragon in it, and <laughs> yeah, and then suddenly you've got yeah, you've got exactly. fantasy army, um, and then. Have, yeah. There's some. Uh, there's one I picked up called Cobalt and Cobblestone. There's a, mm-hmm. a space RPG called Rogue Stars. I'm trying to think what else is on my bookshelf. Uh, but then Gasland started that way as well. 
Uh, but a number of those games, as far as Osprey are concerned, are are fire and forget. You know, they go, they they found a nice set of rules that someone's written, and then they've yes. they've published had, them, had it yeah. published. They've you know they yeah. they've bought an artist in and yeah, um, tidied it all yeah. up and had it published. And it's, it's it's one step above what we were talking about before, but it's still just it's some, still very much an indie game, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, someone's written a game for fun, and then. And then sometimes these things take off. So then Gaslands is one I can think of, for instance, that started as a blue book and then um, the second edition got its own sort of full hardback and stuff. So it is a it is a way things can start. But these games, I think, if you were, if you had time to play a lot of games but you weren't interested in having like a main game, I think they'd be a good way of keeping things interesting and doing, playing different stuff. But once yeah. again, I don't think a lot of them are for beginners. I oh th- no! I think no. I think Lion and Dragon Rampant are, are a bit of a different example, and I could see them getting more support down the line. But um, yeah, some of them are just a rule set that you can play to play out certain situations, and mm-hmm. and that's kind of what yeah. all they're for. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of thing. But I mean, once again, a lot of people, Osprey Blue Books, I think you find them on a lot of like old. Long time war gamers bookshelves because there's some interesting stuff there. Um, so, yeah, yeah, there is, um, and there's a vast. There's loads of them as well. Oh. I mean, Osprey have just got, you know, if, if you really want to go through it, they've got hundreds of them, and they they're just yeah, yeah. They, they, there's, I think they're mostly historical uh, on the most yeah. part. Oh yeah, but um, oh, yeah. yeah, there's there's all sorts of uh, sort of sci-fi and fantasy ones mm-hmm. sort of dotted in there. I think I. Yeah, said so I think I've got most of the sci-fi ones, but I know there's a few that I don't. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. I mean, so it's so a cool way to get then... into a sort of uh, and which I said it's 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 where what where we call the definition supported because they're never going to make models for those games. No, they're I think probably not going to make supplements for them. No, no, no. I mean, indie games are great for like I think you've hit the nail on the head for variety. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what that's what indie games are great for. You. you because generally they're not a mass, although they may be a, quite a complex rule set, it doesn't necessarily mean they're a a big thick rule book. They're you know sometimes they they could be like sort of twenty pages long, thirty pages long, uh, so easy to read through. But you know sometimes the mechanics are somewhat completely different to what you'd be used to. So that they, you know they'd be using sort of d twenties or you know d tens rather than d sixes, for example, and it's just stuff like that. Um, but they definitely bring a spice to the to the the, the, the hobby. That that's what I really love about indie games um, because you can be playing the same game, same corporate game for years and years and years, and then you fall in fall into this little indie game. You think, wow, what have I been doing? This is amazing. This is such a cool little game, yeah. um, and you can just pick it up. At, and pretty much, you, and again, another good thing about the indie games is you can use any pretty much any models. Um, you know, I mean, gosh, all the, there's loads of his, historical miniature companies out there. So, you know, especially things like right, Lion Rampant and then going into the Dragon Rampant. There's hundreds of medieval um, companies out there doing medieval uh, yeah. miniatures. So they're easy to get into in that sense. It's just, it's, again, I just think it's sometimes hard to find those games. Yeah, would you know about them if you... Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, if exactly you, that. Because, you, you know, you don't, they don't get coverage on... On, on websites or you know no. you probably don't get a lot of youtube on them and stuff um no. so where, yeah, where would you get exposure to that except from people you you know word, word of mouth and i think the other thing mm-hmm. is i don't think you're ever going to go to a war games club and i'm going to go and see that many be... that many indie games that i already play being played yeah it's more a situation yeah. of you and your mate decide to pick up said game said rule set and yeah. play that between you know a small group of people that have already pre-agreed to it they're never going to be pick up games down the local club i don't think yeah. uh which is one of the downsides i think of uh the smaller the the game the smaller the player base and the community um which i think we'll get onto at the end but yeah uh, that's yeah, no, definitely i think that's the downside of them um, so 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 J- james so essentially indie games then sort of roll a little bit into discontinued games because once an indie game is written essentially it's almost discontinued straight away because they're not they're not going to be added to. They are just out there for you to find and get into. Yeah. Um. So, so obviously, so in a, in a sense that 
that in, in kind of a definition, that is a discontinued game. Um, and there, and there, but there's also been quite, there's been many uh, really well loved uh, and well played games that have just been completely left and never added to. And, and you know, some of them are actually completely mad. You know, I mean, okay, GW brought back Blood Bowl again, but for ages that was discontinued and that had a massive player base. Yeah. And I think the player base is what makes the difference between Blood Bowl and say something like Relics, which had a really. Uh, intense fan base the people who liked it I mean, it might not have been a big fan base but they were they were really big fan if people aren't aware of relics it was set in like a a weird fantasy post-apocalyptic world with like living puppets there was little it's gremlins. almost cartoony it's almost cartoony yeah. wasn't it there was like fairies there was these weird mm. steampunk like monstrosities uh there wasn't any really any humans per se like anywhere no. particularly um it was actually was, a nice aesthetic. I I really enjoyed it. I like the, the those 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 puppet those weird British puppets. They were yeah they were fantastic. Yeah, it was uh, really surreal. I think um, mm. while being still a bit grim dark in its own way. Um, yeah, and so their community kind of the problem they're having is kind of we've mentioned it. There was never very many rule books in print. I don't own one. The models no, I. the models were almost sort of supply and demand. And more or less, once the company went out of business, uh, and they got sold to TC Combat, who currently own the rights, and currently they sold off the back catalogue of models. But I don't think they made any more. So now a lot of the popular models you can't find for any amount of money. They're just sat in someone's collection, and that's it. Uh, and you don't see much resale on them. You don't see them on eBay much. Uh, and the community Facebook page has slowly dwindled to almost nothing. I mean, it can only be a handful of people playing it. I, I, mean, don't, I don't think. It, I don't think. To be honest, from the way the Facebook community page has been looking, I don't think anyone's actually playing it. Because someone made yeah. some comment recently, and someone almost said, "Like, why bother?" Like, they're so yeah. they're so depressed over there, just because yeah. it never had. I said, "There's there's there's no way if you were if you didn't have the stuff already, I don't think there's any physical way you could get into it. So you certainly couldn't get a build an army from what's left. You couldn't buy a rule book." You could obviously download a rule book and stuff, but yeah. Mm. So that's that's an example of a game that was loved, but it's just un you, basically is so unsupported now. I mean, I that mean, you uh, couldn't that, play that, it. Yeah, I mean, this 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 particular game, relics, it, it suffered from the company going under. Yeah, and I think yeah, you mentioned so, so uh, Spartan Games as well, and a few other games companies went under a few years ago. And yeah. I think a few of these games would be the same sort of situation where. The models aren't being made anymore. The rule books were never. There's never lots of them, so it's all just completely done away. I think. Yeah. Um, and if you look back to things like confrontation, Rackham confrontation, and uh, yeah, uh, even further back, there was like Warzone, which was like the 40k competitor, like years ago. Yeah. Uh, all of which now the miniatures are hen's teeth. These are discontinued games that are so completely out of print and done with that it'd be very hard to continue playing you them now. I think so. I think you really, and I, I think you'd even struggle to just sort of make up a band of miniatures that you could use for them as well. Some, some of them, yeah, yeah, you know, some of them are so obscure. And then so you've you got just... Blood Bowl on the flip side of that, where that got discontinued, but the fan base was so huge and so passionate, and it is a fully quality game. Um, everyone should have a game Blood Bowl at some point. And, and they have. They, and they, that those the, the fans of that game continued playing that game all the way through its disc, the, the period of which it was disc, discontinued. It got bigger. I think. I think if mm. anything, it got the events. There was f world championships. People were traveling around the world to play Blood Bowl. Uh, countless miniatures companies sprung up making uh, physical sculpts. Mm. Um, 3D printing only has enhanced Blood Bowl. Um, do, both... do you think? Do you think um, Mantix brought out a, a, a game, didn't they? That oh, was dread, dread, similar. Dread, dread ball dread or something. Ball? Yeah, I that? don't know. I can't think what it's called. Yeah, I've got um, a team for that actually. I've got some turtles. Uh, that was, wasn't. And, it wasn't uh, a very nice game. But no, it probably wasn't. But do you think that sort of kicked GW back into no making it again? I don't because so. someone else was sort of doing the something similar. No, I think so. In my timeline in my experience I, I don't know what made no i do 
I think the only thing that kicked the blood, uh, Games Workshop back into making Blood Bowl again was they they saw there was a lot of money being made off it. There was a lot of passion for it. There was a lot of interest. And they then they had a time when they were decided they were going to put more money into specialist games. And that's the obvious one. Out of all the box yeah. games that Games Workshop ever made, Blood Bowl's the one that's had its own life, I think, the most. Maybe like Mordheim and... More time, more than Necromunda, probably. Uh, yeah, but of all the yeah. box games, Blood Bowl is the only one that's had its international community and yeah, dedicated play- players. Because there's a lot of people who play Blood Bowl and nothing else. And I think the, the no, there is actually there's a couple of YouTube channels that only do Blood Bowl now as well. Yeah. And yeah, the so. the community, which is, yeah, I said absolutely huge, probably one of the biggest games there is really in some ways. Um. They kept the rule book going. They turned it into a living rule book. They set up paid organisations, which is the NAFF, the NAF, that you could join, um, which was like a membership, and you got benefits from being a member. And oh, you could only go to certain tournaments if you were a member and stuff. So this thing turned into a little cottage industry. I said, and there's miniatures are being made, and so the the community supported their own game in lieu of the original publisher. Yeah. Um, But it meant that the rules were always being updated and it meant there was always new miniatures. And and weirdly enough, Blood Bowl, for a game that only you can only play with 12 miniatures, um, people have a lot of miniatures for it. Um, Yeah. But but they're they're quite fun, aren't they? The the Blood Bowl miniatures. I think people like to just sort of collect them as well. And it's, it's a really... It's a really easy game to sit down across from an opponent and play. And it's yeah. a really easy game to arrange a, a, a league or a tournament for as well. Um, and it's a, sh- it's a relatively short game as well, compared to, say, Warhammer Fantasy, that's going to take you, like, six hours. You can get a game of Blood Bowl tidied up in an hour and a half if you know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a game you could almost take to the... Well, I think you could. You could take it to the pub I've, and just sit there it. in the corner and, seen it and done. play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and it's the oh, only game that I'm really aware of that's had that life cycle, where the original publisher said uh, no, and then the fans kept it alive. You know, I said I think it got bigger than ever, and then the original publishers then um, booted it back up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So that's so that's so, a unique so... case as far as I know. <clears throat> Def- no, definitely. So then that kind of right. Like... So then uh, GW have brought it back uh, and people were happy and it, they're playing the new, the new Blood Bowl. Um, but they're also, we've, we've touched on it earlier on, but that kind of rolls into those companies that updated their, um, their rule sets, uh, but just completely killed their game by doing so. Um, we, I mean, we, we, we talked about obviously new editions and old editions, whether you like old editions or like, like new editions. But what I'm talking about here is where companies have brought out a new edition and it's destroyed or, or, or it seemingly has to, to, to the general public that destroyed their game. Uh, and what biggest one I'm thinking here is, is War Machine. Yeah, War Machine is the obvious one for, for mentioning to this because that, I said, we, we had, and this is the Bedford War Games Club, we had a handful of, of war machine players with a couple of armies each. I think uh, we had about there must be about eight of us yeah. in, in a total, yeah. And then the the Milton Keynes locally had uh probably another sort of ten, fifteen. They had they had it bigger over there and uh there was local tournaments that were being held. Yeah. Um the but Milton was, Keynes was... still had had a proper like privateer press uh yeah. link up so they they had the patches and medals and stuff for, at their events. Yeah. Like yeah, I mean, we were doing tournaments in Milton Keynes and not in uh, Northampton and stuff, weren't we? So we yeah, so it had a, had a good cops. community, and then we we kind of stopped playing it for one reason or another. We just played some, we were playing some different stuff. But even when we were playing different stuff, we'd still fall back on a game of War Machine every now and again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then third edition came out. As I mentioned this before. We all got excited. We all went out and bought a new starter box, and then we played it. I think we, I probably only had about four or five games if that three or four games of third edition yeah and then we all just stopped well we... it was i don't i can't put my finger on it but it lost all life there was something about it that just 
absolutely killed it. Uh, and actually, I think, no, I can put my finger on it. There's a couple of things. Um, third, third edition War Machine. Um, they brought out this idea that you have all your cards online. And after, what they after did that, they made the, me buy a load of cards, so I bought yeah, all after, new after cards. They make you buy, yeah, you buy a load of cards, but then they put then they moved them all online. But what they did then was because they were moved online, they started tweaking with them. So so whenever there was an errata to a card, uh, mm-hmm. when I say a card, like a um, you know about a character, they would change it online, so you could never remember the stats. They're all they're constantly changing. So you need to keep, you had to keep looking up and you could never remember. And if you've never played War Machine, it is a game where you need to know your stats, but you also need to know your opponent's stats. Yeah, you've you got, don't know, you've got to have you a good idea what your that, opponent's doing. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know that information, y- y- it's not an enjoyable game. You need, you no. need to know that information. It's a very, it's a very strategic game. It, it, it's a very, War Machine 2 was a very good game because it was all about knowing what you've got understanding what your opponent has and working out the best way to beat that that army and, and once again if, you, good. if you're not familiar with war machine the the base game the you know the rules for the uh, actual like movement and fighting were fairly simple they were fairly broke down and uh, a very robust it's a you know tournament quality game very robust think, crunchy basic think, rules so all of the yeah. spice was on your was in your individual stats. unit is it was your yeah. personal unit stats so yeah. they were that's they made the game the individual rules for your individual yeah. units made the game rather yeah. than the rules in the book which is why you needed cards in the first place because you needed to i mean there was no way you'd ever remember what all your, your units and characters did really unless no 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 you needed the cards you needed the cards there i mean what well, like, war machine 2 for me was um it's got whether this is a, a good analogy or some people might think oh no it must sound awful but it it was the closest game i've ever war game i've ever played that's kind of a bit more like chess where it's it was all about outthinking your opponent with knowing like I say knowing your stats knowing where understanding their stats and maneuvering and yeah you had to how think he, how he could you had to think a number of turns ahead you had to yeah, try and out think your opponent you had to there correct was, there was a yeah. lot of strategy in there uh, um, in third that was taken away from you because you couldn't you just didn't know what your opponent did that so you, and pre-measuring you, and pre-measuring killed it as well oh my god yeah um because that that changed that changed the 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 balance of the game because as soon as you brought pre-measuring in you could then work out exactly what you could do whereas beforehand it was it, there was an element of guesswork and it may not pay, pay off or you, you could only ever measure in, in second you could only ever measure the distance your caster's command range yeah so if you knew your caster had an, an eight inch range and they were stood next to someone with a, a 10 inch rifle yeah you could you could do some sneaky stuff like that but that was part of the game whereas when you yeah, could yeah. just go oh are they 10 inches away yeah they are <laughs> like yeah. Oh. yeah and it, then you could you could just go oh they're 10 inches away i'm going to stay 11 and you know 10 and a half inches away I've, yeah, uh, and oh. then nothing happened. And then nothing happened because everyone was just it could be, because everything in in War Machine is a complete wrecking ball. Every you just be you just have a standoff game because you could measure it and you're like, oh, I don't want to go near. I'm not going to go near you because I can see. I know I know exactly how far your guy can move. And I think uh, it's just oh, I don't know. It just brought it just. And you have to be for, that player. You have to be a. Uh, it's War Machine's one of the few games that really encouraged being that guy you know you could really mm. and to play it to actually play it and win you had to be really crunchy rules focused yes you did yeah. one of the few yeah. games i've ever enjoyed Which, where that was the do, case yeah, do, and i was just going to say that actually and it's funny we're, we're, we're getting well it sounds probably, i'm probably saying like i'm getting quite irate about it but it, it was actually a game i really enjoyed mm-hmm. um and i don't i don't enjoy many games in terms of doing it as a, a competitive game but but War Machine, I actually enjoyed it being competitive. That was for me the fun of it. Yeah. And then, and it was just taken away overnight. But have you it, have uh, you still got your War Machine stuff? I second, do. Se- have you got your second I, edition I stuff? Do. I do have it. Yeah. Yeah. I I've, I've, I've still got, got my second edition cards. I've still got all my models. I've still got all. I mean, I've got all the second edition books. Um, yeah. 
So have I. I mean, we and, and this and, and this do, brings do, us back to. Uh, have you got any interest in playing a game of second? Yeah, I would play a game of second. Really? Of course I would. Oh, the answer was meant to be no for the whole. I really. Oh uh, no, I, I don't know. I, I, is it? Meant would you to rather be no? play that over play... something else? Or would no, you rather just no, play something no, else? No, 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 no. I've got better games I play now. I, I've got games I enjoy more. I'm, I'm not going to rush out and get my War Machine stuff out to play. No. But if if you turned around and said to me, "Ah, oh, you know, I've got, I've, you know, hankering for we it," got, we, yeah, we got together one night and we said, "Oh, do you fancy a game of War Machine?" I had my stuff with me. Strangely, I'm, I'm, okay, yeah, I play it. And would we play but third or second? A third's still current, I think. That's no, I would play second. I wouldn't play third. Yeah. Oh, I'll never play third, <laughs> and, and that's. And but then, and that's it for me, really. But but if and, I wanted and, to play, uh, play, so I was talking to a guy at the Oathmark weekend the other day, uh, and he was like, "Oh, you, you play War Machine," uh, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, no, I, I did quite a bit." Uh, and he's like, "Oh, you should come uh, play War Machine with us. Uh, we've got like a dedicated group." But I'd have to go and play third. Yeah, uh, and that brings me on to another one I was going to mention, which is X Wing. I lost interest in X Wing. I, first edition X Wing, I thought was really unique. It was really clever. Um, it was really different from anything I'd played before. And I, and I, you know, I didn't buy into it big, but I've got a dozen ships and... Yeah, yeah. Um, and stuff. And then second edition, I just... That was partly... They lost me on the edition because I couldn't be bothered to rebuy any, everything. And that's what happened in the, in that... Because I never played it, but the second edition then, you had to... You had to rebuy all the miniatures. Basically. Um why is that then what what happened to the why what happened to the old miniatures because so i had my faction for instance um so uh, i had a bunch of b wings a bunch of a wings uh, and a, i had new x wings i had the new um the the new type of x wing from the new, latest films oh yeah 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 so yeah. if i wanted to use all the ships i had i just said it wasn't many uh i would have had to have bought the they split my faction rather than it just being um, good guys, basically. Right. They, okay. spl they split the timelines between um, the rebellion, right. so Luke Skywalker, yeah. and um, the resistance, so um, Poe Dameron. Poe po yeah, po Dameron. Um, yeah. So they yeah. became two separate factions, uh, despite things like A wings and. I think even B wings being in both to right, use okay. everything I had, um, I'd have had to have bought both box sets. So that was already like sixty quid down, just to get all the new cards um, and tokens and bits and pieces. I would have yeah. then had to have bought the new. The only way to buy the rules for X wing is to buy the original box, which is another like thirty quid. So I'd, I'd be like ninety quid down. So, 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 so straight away, then, right? This is telling me that is it Fantasy Flyer did this? Yeah, they, they they literally brought second their second edition out only to make more money, whereas I think War Machine brought it out because they thought they were improving the game. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So that kind of brings us back what we were talking about at the beginning. Like, there's two, there's different reasons why you might change an edition. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think Fantasy Flight they brought out all the iconic ships. They're not making any more iconic ships. The, there's no new films, really. Um, yeah. yeah. What do you do? Uh, they've, they they started re-releasing the ships recently, so like the new X-Wing's got like movable bits. In fact, the new B-Wing, I think, is pretty cool. It's, it swizzles on its axis, mm. um, like it does in the films. It goes into like, attack mode. But... Um, Oh yeah, yeah. So if you already goes, own three yeah. B wings like I do, and three, I, I run a three. I like a three B wing list. Um, I'm not going to go and buy three more B wings just because these are new ones swivel. <laughs> I've got mine. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So if someone said you want a game of, uh, yeah, I'm kind of more set in the fact that if someone said you want a game of X wing, I'd be like, I'll play a game of first edition because uh, I've yeah. got all the stuff for that. But yeah, I'm, that's the I'm same for me. Not going to invest. I'm not going to invest in. Um, in third edition probably ever now and i think yeah. that game is a game that's that's kind of done i think a lot of people got annoyed i think i've not there used to be a lot of buzz around x-wing it was massive i, I yeah it was I don't yeah. see that anymore like really i think i think it's done as a game i think people aren't as interested and i think in a few more years it'll probably just sort of die off yeah and there was a lot yeah, of people yeah, no. that just played x-wing as well that was there because it got a lot of people into the hobby i think 
because it was pre-painted miniatures. It was obviously a recognisable IP. Well, we met, we mentioned this actually. This is this was a conversation one of our last podcasts, wasn't it? Yeah. About the uh, the IP um, of it all, um, bringing people into the hobby, which I think yeah, it's a really it interesting. Did. It's a really interesting example of a war game because like kind of pushes what you can kind of define as a war game and i said it's completely different tactic of release to a lot of other things i mean someone one person once told me they're not actually selling you models they were selling you bits of cardboard with a free model which is really was their thing so when the cardboard was all invalidated that's you know basically why you have to buy everything again yeah yeah Um, so this possibly brings us back around to what we were talking earlier about Warhammer. So obviously 8th edition um, was the last edition. There was a f- yeah. very few people, I think, played Warhammer. I mean, for all the time I've ever been playing games, certain people have stuck at certain editions. So even yeah. when I started playing, there were certain people who got, oh, 6th edition's rubbish. I still only play 4th and stuff like this. Uh, and there's yeah. I, every time there's an edition upgrade, someone has a moan. And, some people, oh, gotcha. and you leave some people behind. Um, definitely but I think if I if someone said to me I want to play some Warhammer Fantasy someone did recently say that to me and I said ooh sixth <laughs> and then me maybe play eighth um, but in hindsight I, I would prefer to play sixth than eighth because I, I can look at the whole history of the game now and go Oh, I think sixth has the best bal- you know best balance of yeah, yeah, yeah. where so they were going the- it, was, it was modern enough that it was fun but it was um, yeah. it's... you're a seasoned, seasoned enough um, fantasy player to to make that decision as well. well I, so you've played I, played I, enough of the versions to say, right, I actually like this version best. Yeah. So I mean, sixth, um, I can't remember what was broken in sixth. Something probably was, but seventh, like magic was broken and stuff, and then eighth, hordes were broken, and it just became you know hundreds of things. So there's reasons why I don't like seventh and eighth. Uh, that I can't really pick out in sixth. So, and I think the problem with sixth was like characters and monsters and stuff. People just use loads of characters and monsters, and which I'm really I'm fine with. I'm that's a cool game to me. So, yeah, yeah. So it, it, can, it can sometimes just be in personal preference, can't it? As well, you know. Yeah. And just because sixth is sort of people think it's the best, it doesn't. You know, is it? Who knows? It's just. I, I it's think just it also had like the grim dark, and it had the the the. It started a bit of comedy. It still had a bit more. Yeah, see, Charm that's why. It, which agreed. Seventh, agreed. Went, uh, seventh went too serious, and eighth went, you know, went a bit uh, mad. So again, for me though, I I like the aesthetics of fourth. Yeah, uh, because it isn't. It's it's more. That's more. It's like more cartoony and a bit more um, so fun. I think of like the, the the goblins are a bit more mental and weird and odd yeah. and you know, and 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 the armies back then weren't as big. No, definitely so you, not. you didn't you didn't need as many models, but I think sixth is the sixth is like um, third of forty k, where the game changed. Sixth yeah. is the start. Sixth is the start of it being a bit more again grim, dark, serious. I think sixth for me is the first edition of modern Warhammer. Yeah, as you say, there was a big change, um, and I think sixth was the f- the first edition where they. They went from it being one game, yeah. Like there was a distinct. I, I, they actually probably came out at similar sort of times. I think third edition forty k came out in like ninety eight, and sixth edition fantasy probably came around about two thousand. Yeah, I want to say so. So sort of similar, sort of a like, similar sort of years. Because like third edition um, fantasy was a different game altogether. It had like more RPG elements and oh yeah, and no, stuff like that. Like, it wasn't even like a, a the same sort but of game were... at all. But there was an element of it being more, you know, that, that GW had decided, right, we're going down a grim, dark feel rather than but, the, the sort of the original sort of fun, yeah, um, comical aesthetic they used to have. But I think fourth edition for me was, is, is, if you say if you say retro Warhammer, I think of Goblin Green bases on flocked hills with Jarvis train scenery trees, um, yeah. and I think of the you know the, the, yeah. the bright primary colours. That's retro Warhammer to me. That's you know fourth edition, and that's cool. Yeah. That's kind of I like that aesthetic and I like that look. But if I want to play a game and be into a game, I prefer the the the, the paint style, the model style of the more modern looking sixth, huh? 
well, you still had a hand sculpted miniatures, but they had that grim dark ch- charm, mm-hmm. and yeah, and then, and then yeah, and that slowly sort of developed too much. But yeah, so it's if I had to take a snapshot, as I said, that'd be where I'd go. But I mean, yeah. technically, like Blood Bowl, fantasy is still being supported by the fans because you've got Ninth Age, which started as just Ninth Edition Warhammer fan written. And that's massively yeah. supported. There's there's a big online presence for it. I believe there's tournaments. There. I mean, it's not. It's. I don't think it's taken off the same way Blood Bowl did, but it's definitely there. It's definitely an option. And if you go on the sort of Warhammer Facebook groups, people talk about it as if that's it's a very a, big community. Actually, if you go on the Facebook groups, it's really yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely well supported. Definitely because all of the Warhammer players just carried on playing Warhammer, and then when they realised that Eighth Edition had its limitations. Well, what's to stop you at that point going, well, we'll just make our own Warhammer with Blackjack and Hookers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and this, again, going back to the title of the, of the show, uh, Unsupported, well, there's there's a couple of different ways of supporting a game, isn't there? I mean, it could be fan-driven or it could be uh, company-driven. Well, we kind of defined it as uh, no more supplements, uh, no more models. So Ninth Age makes up for the fact that Games Workshop aren't writing any more rules. Uh, I mean, Games Workshop are still making models, probably not that many suitable for Ninth Age, but there are a, an infinite number of companies making fantasy suitable figures. There's even companies that, as far as I understand it, basically started to. I know oh, Avatars. Well, that, I know Avatars of War, for instance, were big on it. Uh, yeah, so well, like that. that's what that, that's what they um, they've made their miniatures to fit the ninth age as such. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To support yeah. ninth age because obviously they started, if you know, especially if they were companies that started by making alternative miniatures for Warhammer, that's obviously then the community that they want to stick with. Um, so yeah, so there's as you say, it's the support is no longer official support, but. I would say that Ninth Age has plenty of support. You know, there's new rule books being made. There's uh, the 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 rules are living rule book now. Um, there's still new models all the time for from all sorts of places. And I think one of the really good examples for models for Ninth Age is going to be uh, this week's recommendation. Um, so yeah. yeah. So is 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 Warhammer still supported? Yeah, I guess in a kind of way, but that's not the one I'd go for. Weirdly. No, so I wouldn't go for it either. But you're right; it 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 is supported in its own bizarre, odd way, uh, and purely by the fans, which is is you know that's good to see. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously the controversy of all that of it all disappearing in the first place pissed a lot of people off. So I'm not surprised that a lot of people said no, so we're going to do our own thing. Um, it, it kind of made sense, and it kind of unleashes in, in you. Of it unleashes you from the shackles if. If you want to make a change to Warhammer before, um, if you're an 8th edition player and you just didn't like the way the rules were set up, it's very yeah. unlikely that your voice was going to get heard in Nottingham. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. And Whereas now, it... go and get involved. I imagine, I mean, yeah. I've got my name in a few different rule books from sort of Mantic and Warplock and um, there's another one I can't think of. But you could, a lot of companies, not Games Workshop, have have <laughs> forums where normal players can get involved and play test stuff yeah. and they'll take your feedback and they'll write your name in the yeah. front of the book i know it's crazy isn't it and yeah 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 something like ninth age that's that's the only people that are making right in that game so you yeah. if you really wanted you know if you had something you really wanted to do you could someone's going to list talk to you about it um and and that's you you could potentially make a change I'm not saying they can listen to you, but you know, if if everyone else thinks it's a good idea, then that's. I mean, also, I think it's one of those games where if you're playing it at home and you want to change a rule, just change a rule. I, I, I mean, mean, that's the case for all I, games. I, really. I, I, yeah, yeah, you. T- of course, of course, it is. But I'm gonna when, have a whole episode on when, that. But when, but when you've got um, a set of rules in front of you, it's hard to then go. I'm going to change the rule because I don't like it. You know, you you do feel a obliged to keep to the rules it just that's what it says in the book that's what we do mm-hmm. um i i think i i've actually i've played very few games where we've gone right yeah this rule's a bit funny we're just gonna change it frostgrave I, we i had a 
if, if you remember when we played Frostgrave, I, I don't think you played as much as, as some of the others at the club, but uh, no. I ended up with a full A4 sheet of house rules um, for, for various <sighs> bits and pieces. Because there was, I think there was one like spiders can climb walls. Like, why would spiders pay movement to climb a wall? They're spiders. Like, when in a movie have you seen a spider have trouble, like, hanging up downside down from a ceiling? It doesn't seem to matter. It doesn't matter physics because it's fantasy. So, like, it doesn't matter if it's a six foot spider clinging to a yeah. glass wall. <laughs> you know, they do it. Yeah. So, yeah. it was some stuff like that. And uh, I, I can't remember I, off the top of my head, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think dogs could carry treasure. And we sort of made no. If he hasn't got hands, it can't carry treasure. <laughs> <laughs> he can hold it in his mouth. He's got a little basket with it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, but just we we made a few house rules for that, but then that's such yeah, a, yeah, that's yeah. such a simple framework for a rule set that you kind of yeah, yeah exactly yeah. But then that's yeah, the sort yeah, of thing you kind of catch in a second edition. So yeah, true. Um, yeah, yeah, true. I think every I think second editions should listen to the fans and should just be a massive amalgam of everyone's house rules because I think the best game is a game that you don't feel you need to house rule. Yeah, I agreed. Agreed. Um, Okay, so that brings us on to a current game then. We've talked about it a lot this episode already, uh, but then it's because it's my current go-to game, and that is Oathmark again. So Joe McCullough, the author of Oathmark, said that he's that all the supplements that have come out for it now, there's been three um, that have covered various bits from the undead to sort of longer campaigns and um, what came out last. So, yes, yeah, a few extra units and bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, but they were all written at once, so. I oh, really. Kind, well, he, kind he, of he wrote them all. Yeah, more right. or less. They were all in the works from the get go. So right. part of me thinks that's kind of Osprey's way of making a bit more money. They do it yeah. with all their games. They're bigger games. They will release a rule book and then they will churn out a few supplements. Yeah. Um, so Frostgrave being the massive biggest one of that. There's there's like a dozen supplements for Frostgrave now. Yes. Uh, which annoys me because like I was at a tournament the other week and I ended up having to flick through se three separate books uh, to get all the stuff from my army, which is something I hate about Warhammer. Like 40k ended up like that. I ended up having to have to flick four books on the table to play yeah. one army. Drove me mad. Uh, <laughs> and, and you're not the best of uh, concentration when it comes to gaming, are you as well? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I, I like a game that kind of gets out of the way of itself, which is one of the reasons why I like Oathmark. Once you've got your flow in Oathmark. Yeah. And I like to, what I've started doing is I wrote a load of my special rules down on my army list. Yeah. Um, That's a good idea. But yeah, every now and again, you know, I have to reference something, especially since I've not, I've not played that many games of it, really. No, 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 no. Exactly. Um, so yeah. Um. So yeah, it did beg the question, why didn't, you know, or the, it's, it's not really a question. I, I suppose I wanted to make more money rather than just build, sell one big, 50 quid rule book they sold a 30 quid rule book and a bunch of 10 pound supplements okay it's fine that's the yeah it. A, a, but, again a, a company's got to make money yeah. it's got to make money and that's well and it's also a way of keeping the game supported it's also a way of keeping the game alive so if you just bring out rule book like we said before like the blue books and then that's it draw a line under it um well you've got less opportunity to keep the buzz going <laughs> Whereas... Yeah, I was just going to say that it, it it stops the buzz. You need something to keep the buzz. So it's it, it's like I guess in a way it's like a a band uh, releasing music. You know, they 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 very rarely they just go right. There's our album done. They like to, especially nowadays with it all online, they release a song at a time to just get that buzz going, keep everyone going. Oh yeah, have you had that new song? Um, and it's like it'll be it'll be the same for these these miniature war game companies. So. I actually read a really interesting article about sort of say Stranger Things versus The Mandalorian yeah. um, about why Stranger Things isn't as big as maybe it would be because okay. basically what happens is Stranger Things, a new series of Stranger Things comes out. Yep. Uh, everyone watches it in sometimes over the weekend. Yeah. You've probably nailed the whole 10 episodes or whatever by the end of the week. It, it, easy. Yeah. With Stranger Things, you, you'll watch it. Bang. You'll just do it. Real quick. So you yeah, you okay. talking about it at work and all oh, what's going to happen and you, the buzz is there and all the memes will come out and I, that'll be the big I, buzz around Strange Things and it'll last a I, week I, I, a fortnight. I know, where you, I, know where you're, I know where you're going with this, but I do... The I'm Mandalorian <laughs> came out over, yeah, what, two months? Three months? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, one a week, wasn't it? One a week. 
and it got talked about so much. Constantly. I know, but but I, the buzz just they stretched it out, and I think that's the same. Yeah, it, no, you're right. It is. I didn't like that. I wanted to watch all of them in one yeah, go. So did I. But, but were you, you know, not waiting? Yeah. Were you not like, oh shit, it's Tuesday. The Mandalorian's out again, or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Uh, old school TV star. Yeah, it, yeah, it takes you back to your childhood, doesn't it? Rushing home on a Thursday night to watch Buffy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but um, no, you're right, and 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 that, and that is exactly why they do supplements a lot of the time is to get to keep you remembering the game. Yeah. Because if 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 you don't, a shiny new game will come and take its place, yeah. and that that is actually I think. Maybe, and maybe this is a uh, topic in itself, but game loyalty is something that's very different nowadays. That's uh, going to be part I, of the next episode, I think. I'm going to talk a bit yeah, about that. But yeah. yeah. Uh, but So we won't talk about too much now, but game loyalty um, is, in my opinion, not like it used to be. And I'll no. leave it there for a minute. Yeah, yeah no, I'd agree with that. Um, so, yeah, so, my, so the thing I was thinking of, so the oath mark's done. It's finished. It's got a massive. I think it's doing really well. I think it's a breakout game of the last so, few so years. That, so does that mean it's an unsupported game? As it as it or a slash discontinued game? Is that where it is now? Is Oathmark so a discontinued game? People are as a rule from a rules front. There's not going to be any official rules for the time being. For the foreseeable, there's not going to be any more official supplements or rules. And we're probably years away from a second edition or anything like that. But. Every week I see someone doing some sort of homebrew or like a new army list on the on the players page. So people are really trying to create this content, um, putting scenarios together. Uh, there's bits and pieces. I mean, I know Joe's written a couple of scenarios for magazines and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, so that's it though, James. so that's so the community have almost taken over the yeah the the rules Whoa. side, but the miniatures side. Um, yeah. It's fully supported. Yeah, no, actually, that's where I was just about to say. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I was going to correct myself, actually, because it, it is a supported game still because you're still getting miniatures for it yeah. from North Star. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I. so it, it is a supported game. It's just maybe not necessarily in the sense... Um, saying that, though, I mean, at the end of the day, even GW don't just come up with rules all, all the time, do they? So they'll, they'll do the rule book and then they'll come out with new new, new miniatures, just like Oathmark's doing. So Yeah, but they've they constantly do... got articles. I mean, when I actually played Games Workshop games, what, you had a new codex to think about. There was always an upcoming codex. Yeah, there something. was, yeah. And you, the, if you're a big 40k player, it's kind of like we're talking about War Machine. You kind of have to know everything that everything does. I'm, yeah. I've, I've met plenty of people who own every who at the time owned bought the code every codex when it came out yeah so that's every month pretty much they'd be buying a new codex so they could mm -hmm. they could know what every single unit in the in the game did yeah and there's a constant release schedule like every week pretty much games workshop releases something right yeah they do yeah you're right yeah um yeah. so they keep that little thing going uh yeah yeah that's so the market in the wheel of, of gw and yeah. i think what uh War Machine used to do was a really good way of keeping a game alive as well, which was that they released a book every was it every quarter? I think so. I think so. Yeah, so they it released was. two books a year for each for War Machine and two books a year for Hordes. Yeah, and I said I got every single one from the time we were playing um, to the to third edition um, because they had all the new units. For, so you had basically a new unit for every faction. Um, so everyone got some. So if every, whatever army you played, you were going to get something. You tended to get a new jack as well. So it'd always be yeah. a new heavy and a yeah. new, a, a new sort of like either a character there'd be, or a there'd be something castle. for you. Yeah, yeah. And I had a, I had a, a war machine army and a hordes army, which meant that pretty much every book had something for me in it. I mean, if you yeah. only played a hordes army, you could probably ignore the war machine books. But yeah. the story, although the story was separate across the two. They intertwined, and it was all set in the same world at the same time. And the story progressed, and about fifty percent of the books is story. Yeah. So, and then there was campaign rules that matched the story, and I thought that was a really good way because then those books weren't especially cheap. So you get a whole, you sell a whole another book to everyone, 
um, with essentially adverts for new models in them. Um, so you'd be like, oh, this new unit looks cool. And then when's that coming out? Oh, that's coming out in a couple of weeks. Mm. You'd, uh, you'd, so you'd tell everyone a book, you'd tell everyone more models, and you'd keep the conversation going constantly. And I think that was, that's genius. I think that's, if I ever became CEO of a, a wargaming company, that's what I'd, that's what I'd do. And that's kind of what Oathmark did. Like all of their books that have released a new unit have released a new something for everyone. So whether it was yeah. Living Statues, which was anyone can have them, uh, or the Chariots, where they actually gave an example of a chariot for every single, for every single playable race. So yeah, 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 yeah. No, definitely. Um, so that's a definitely. good, good way of doing it. But, but as I said, Oathmark's not going to get any more official rule support. So where does that leave people? Will will people will the buzz go down without Osprey putting stuff out? Like... Mm, I th- well, now this, I think this actually leads us on to the next point. Will the buzz go down? Well, my point. <laughs> My point on this would be maybe, maybe if the old world comes in and it's anything like original fantasy, mm-hmm. I think Oathmark will suffer with a lack of buzz because there'll be a new buzz in town. Um, I, th- I, th- I think you're right. I and mean, you've said it before. There is a set of hardcore Oathmark players that won't affect, but there is definitely a lot of um players who play Oathmark who play it mainly because they either they don't like Kings of War and there's no new fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I think and I, I think and... to, to, to just to back that up, I think uh I think there's a certain amount of Oathmark players who I've got who are Oathmark for life now. Oh, definitely, without I doubt. That's I mean, until they I, die, I, they're they're gonna play I, Oathmark. I, I'm gonna uh, for, for me for example, I am going to play Oathmark for a uh, you know as long as I play wargaming, because I enjoy the game, uh, and I, you know, I won't do ever do it seriously. I'll just be a nice, fun game of Oathmark. I would definitely, uh, and I couldn't re- recommend it more enough to anyone who hasn't tried it as well. It's a, it's a great game. It's a real fun. It's um, you know, it's it's got a bit of it has got its own little bit of comedy here and there as well. So I I, I like it. Yeah, totally get that. Um, but yeah, the old world. So. It's going to be Games Workshop, so it's going to have massive buzz. You can't massive this massive this buzz. hobby. You can't escape Games Workshop. I don't think. But I think most war gamers, most ones I've ever met, started their hobby journey in a Games Workshop store. I think yes. it's a massive right. recruiter. Yes, for the whole Agreed. hobby, and then yeah, you, you get a bit older and you look around and and you move out into the stuff we've been talking about. Yes, and so that yeah, they're un escapable they are the big dogs in town and they're going to bring out the old world i think there's a certain amount of people who will just play it because that's because games workshop brought it out and it's the new thing from game. i mean certain people will just play the new thing from games workshop whatever it is because that's what the games workshop tell them to do and that's fine that's that's you know that that's their that's how they but you're right it'll, that's their that's their loyalty that's fine it'll steal a do... chunk off uh uh kings of war and... uh, i think kings kings of war could Oathmark won't be as affected as bad as Kings of War, no. but but I will say only I think both both games will only be really be affected if if the old world is anything like fantasy. If it's nothing like fantasy, I think those two games will be fine. Well, it, it, I mean, if it's a really if it's a genuinely really good game, then loads of games could be suffer. Yeah, well, I, that's very true. The yeah. chance of it being a really good game is fairly low in my eyes. This, but... this is this is this is Games Workshop. It's, it's almost <laughs> certainly not going to be a really good game. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's as simple as that. And I think there's also going to be a, a flash in the pan thing. I think people, if they bring out new models for it, people will use them in Oathmark and in Kings of War. Yeah, um, definitely. Like Cursed City stuff. I saw a load of that came up for Oathmark and Kings of War. Um, but I think there's a, you'll draw people away temporarily. If the old world comes out, it's a big box game. People will go and buy the big box game, paint it all up, play it, go, oh, the game's not very satisfying, though, and then revert back. Um, but the thing you've got about that kind of level of support, because when English will bring it out, whatever it ends up being, they will bring it out with just tons of support. There'll be new models. There'll be articles about it. There'll be just sort of hype and 
Uh, yeah, they'll they'll bring out supplements in uh, in White Dwarf, whatever format that's in yep. these days. That they, they, they might you know that they, they'll they'll put a lot of energy into it, and that'll get a player base together instantly. You've got a built in player base. You'll be able to in those few weeks for, for, to start with for definite. You'll be able to walk into a war game store and say, "Oh, does anyone want to play the old world?" Yeah. And someone will have it and be able to play it um which isn't the case with most games that aren't games workshop pretty much any game that isn't games workshop you pretty much have to pre yeah unless you're unless you actually walk to a, like a warlord the, the warlord store <laughs> yeah in yeah. nottingham you, you someone there will be playing something other than a games workshop game. but yeah, yeah. you're right think, yeah there's certain games like bolt action um for instance that i there's pretty much every war game club i've ever been to as a as a people who play bolt action yeah. um that's a pretty big one people have a have a bolt action army somewhere um but yeah so but you'll have that inbuilt player base straight away and that's what i'm saying will will people just play the old world even if it's a bit crap oh definitely because it's got that support definitely and again again if it's because at the moment we don't know what's gonna what it is we okay they've they've told us it's gonna have square bases and they've 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 told us um well what have they told us they haven't told us that much but they told they've because, said that you're gonna be able to use your own armies but right that's it okay but remember so, but remember they said that about age of sigma yeah and exactly you had, if you want to use your old armies you had to make horse noises and mustaches got you extra points yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> um, oh my god! No, so yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be. Um, but it, it will depend. It will yeah. depend on what they bring out as to whether people will stick to it. Um, but and I think you, play you, it. you, 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 um, you made a mention of it last, maybe a couple of episodes ago that um, you feel that it may just be a one-trick pony, and they just bring it out and then not support it. So it may be a, again. Yeah. Back to the title of this this episode, that they may just bring it out and then straight away be almost a discontinued game. It or, ju- or it could get dribs and drabs from Forge World here and there. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, the- which is almost basically not being supported. Basically, like, if if when JGW bring out a game and only Forge World do anything about it, it's basically not con- it's not supported in my eyes because yeah. those those models are so expensive. Who, I mean. You're mad if you. I mean, it's the definition, sort of... which is what I think's completely off topic. But it's one of the weird things I think find about um, Games Workshop, and they have this these specialist games. So technically, Blood Bowl is a specialist game. Uh, the Old World apparently will be a specialist game. But when they say specialist game, they do mean this sort of elite, sort of odd section that can afford to buy Forge World models. The yeah. sort of people that really attracted to like the thirty k stuff. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. There's so many hundreds of people who don't take the hobby that seriously who play, I mean, just something like Burrows and Badges. Less people play Burrows and Badges than 30k. But no one's calling Burrows and Badges a specialist game. Yeah. It's just a cool <laughs> little game. Yeah. Um, I, it's just a weird. I mean, Forge World act like they're this small artisan. Um company yeah but they're, they're not like i don't no I'd... it's it's a, it's just a weird situation for me that i just, I just don't, don't really get understand i don't what the benefit for that is no i know it's just a way of making extra money on or, already expensive models yeah I do. that's what it is but anyway that right we're being yeah we're but being cynical on, on but, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah so Will people play it just because it's supported? Yes, definitely. People play it because it's Games Workshop. People will play it because it'll have come out with loads of hype. And then, as you say, it'll it'll completely. I think it'll completely come down to what do they do next? Is it going to have army books, for instance? That's be the one of the big questions yeah. I'd have. Because then, yeah. are you going to? Because every time you release an army book, you've got another round of hype. You've got exactly people. Yes. Uh, people. I like every edition. I remember waiting for my army books to come out. Um, like goblins and chaos. With my, my oh yeah, you books. get. I mean, I just feel sorry for all the Eldar players. 
<laughs> they never get anything new. <laughs> what about but, what about the Britannian players? What about the yeah, Chaos, yeah. what about the Chaos Dwarf players? <laughs> yeah, but they will bring that. I that I think they're the sort of factions they will bring back in the old world because they know people really want them. Because there's, oh, there's never there was never anything wrong with the Britannian army. It was a lovely army, and a lot of people really loved it. Now. I, that's almost certainly an army they'll bring back. I, well, you reckon? Yeah, I think so. I honestly do. It should, it should I, fit in the time I period, think I think. think um, they, they will bring them back, and, and they may even bring back like Chaos Dwarves as well. It's less likely they'll bring back Chaos Dwarves, but you know that's the sort of thing well, we know, I they might do. We know the two factions they are bringing back are going to be uh, Kislev and um, oh, Cathay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Cathay never had an army, and Kislev only had like horsemen, didn't they? Uh, yeah, yeah. They had the the lancers. They had a they had a foot unit, and they had the ice queen. I don't okay. think they had so, much outside of that. No, uh, they no, were they just, were just an empire just offshoot. A, yeah, exactly. They were just something you'd have in your empire game army. It's yeah. not weren't an army itself. You could theme mm. a Kislev army, but yeah. Um, yeah, and then I think because of the story that I know so far. And then the, and the time they've set it in and stuff. So it's the time of the three emperors. We're talking about this too, way too much, but uh, it's the time of the three emperors. So they're going to do some more empire. There'll be a, a more vanilla empire army, I guess, with loads of big feathers that rather to just kind of counteract against the Kislev sort of furs. Yeah. And, and rougher look. There'll be a fancier looking army. And then they're going to have to do chaos because that's going to be a big part of this, any story they try and tell. Um. Yes, but then yes, I, I uh, could probably reuse a bunch of stuff for that because chaos hasn't changed yeah. in in the timeline. Because if you don't know, the old world is going to be the that it's going right. to be set a few hundred years before the Warhammer Fantasy was ever set. But but James, the bigger question really is: Does it matter? Does it does matter? it does does it matter if it's supported or unsupported? To play the game, does it does it really make a difference to this hobby, to your experience of the game, to um, your what willingness to get into a new game if it's unsupported or supported? Does it does it matter? Completely depends on the situation. So you've got two guys and they want to play a fun game, and if I yep. if, if I knew two people that said I want to just play any war game i've got me and my mate we'll buy some models we'll play some rules what do you suggest i would probably suggest maybe arc world or uh maybe one of the blue books i'd be like you can get really into the the narrative you know you and your friend can have a really good time or burrows and badges or something like that yeah and if you know that you know you live in the hebrides and you're not going to play anyone else it doesn't matter. You can make up a game in your head and play that. Yeah. But if you're, if the thing you like in the hobby is going to events, you're going to want to play something with a player base. Oathmark, yes. for instance, has only ever, as far as I know, to this day, had one singular event, for instance. It's hardly a buzzing event scene. No. Whereas no. anything from Fantasy Flight Games has built in events yeah because they they run their events and they play everything don't they i think yeah yeah um yeah. no i totally get that uh yeah i mean if you're i mean if you're a beer and pretzels kind of guy and you you play this hobby purely for fun and to have a laugh with your mates to have a beer and um relax on a friday night Really, does it matter that the game you're playing is the second edition of a game that's now got nine editions? No, I don't think it does. Not at all. You, you play what you want to play. You play what makes you happy. Um, as long as you can get your as as long as you can get opponents, I think that's the key. Yeah, I, I mean, it's yeah, it is. Of course, it is. But if you've got if there's an agreement between you and your mate that you want to start collecting that particular game. Go right ahead, because I tell you now, there's a lot. In my opinion, mm -hmm. some of some of a, a, a lot of the older editions of any of these companies that we've been talking about are often the better games. Um, 
now and you and and like but but again like you like you're saying james if if you're someone who is has that competitive edge to them it wants to learn and break the game as much as possible to go and win as many games as they can uh, and win competitions and and that's how you get your buzz then you need to play something that's supported you can't you, you, if you were a comp competition player playing um fantasy and they killed it you have to go over to our aos you or yeah to. or yes yeah, so a ninth age has a or, I, think it's, I think it's or, bigger in America, if I'm honest. But yeah, there's definitely a tournament scene there. Yeah, or wherever the tournament scene is on whatever game it is you enjoy. You have to you look have what the to tournament you, scene is and play that game. To, of course you do. You have to jump ship. So you, almost your loyalty to the, the any game is only um, as long as it is out for. Because you need to be able to get that hit that you were getting from that game previously. You need to move to the next game. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it like I think I agree with you. It's it's horses for courses. It really depends on your situation. Why do you play? Why do you hobby? You know, do you hobby to have fun? Um, I'm not saying that competition isn't fun because obviously you'll get your fun out of that. But I'm saying just for a relaxation, you you do it to relax, play with your mates, and have a joke and a laugh and not take it too seriously. And not worry if you get the rules wrong. And you've then... got a dedicated set of people you play against. Uh, uh, yeah, who, who exactly. are also willing to collect the the the, the more obscure stuff? Yeah, uh, and and for me, that's where I am. Yeah, okay. I, I that's how I play my hobbies. I, I could convince you to I, play anything, couldn't I? You literally could, and and yeah, you you really could. You say, "Oh, well, I'm doing this, for, and we're just going to do it for a bit of fun." I'm I'm totally up for it, and I'll always try a game, whether I I might not like it after the game, and might not continue it, but I'll always try a game. Um. But yeah, that's definitely where I am with my hobby. Uh, I've tried a bit of the um, tournament scene with the uh, War Machine back back when we was doing that, and I didn't really. It wasn't for me. It's it's a bit too. It's too. It's too much. It's too much to uh, to take in for myself. But that's just that's just my personal preference. Mm -hmm. But there, I know there's, gosh, you know, even back at the um, the Bedford Wargaming. Uh, group that when that was going on you know there was some people there they, they they truly were um com competitive players i mean they'd yeah. go to all the events at in nottingham at gw to to try and win as much stuff as they could yeah and you've got uh, people and that played played um like the the star wars card games that go to yes. all the events yes uh, even going overseas well, actually, they even went to America. I think they actually what? I think they did. They win? No, they won the they chance won to go stuff, to won a lot of those yeah. mats. Yeah, they, um, yeah, he won the yeah, chance Callum, to go to America Callum. for the for the yeah. finals. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't know if he won the finals, but he definitely he definitely he, went he over. He placed to the high enough in England to be invited to America. Yeah, well, yeah, I think it was first or second. I got he got. Yeah, yeah, uh, but 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 that's you know. <laughs> But yeah, and, and it was all about the competitive. And to them games are even more so that you ha you just have to keep buying the new cards. And when you won't... and when the, uh, what was it, the uh, Game of Thrones card game died, yeah, they might as well just throw them in the bin as far as I could tell. That was it. Overnight it was yeah. like, done. Oh, def there's no point in playing it, is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. agreed, agreed. But I think in summary, guys, you know, it, it... if you've got those old editions... Don't let them sit on the de on on the uh, on your bookshelf getting all dusty. Get them out. Have a game because there's always someone out there who wants to play you. Yeah, Definitely. if you remember having a better time playing a game than you currently are, think why that is and yeah, I totally use them. Don't 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 just leave them there because I mean there's some fantastic rule sets out there uh, and they're just not being played and it's a shame. It's yeah. a shame. So James. With that, that brings us to our recommendation of the week. It does, and it's your turn. It is my turn. Hooray. Right. Okay. So, guys, um, a little while back, I was looking for a giant for my Oath Mark army. And I really, I really wanted um, that sort of old GW aesthetic um giant uh i think you probably know the one 
uh, probably from round about fourth edition, I reckon, actually. Uh, sort of a big guy, massive club, um, all tattered uh, 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 clothing and stuff like that. The second, uh, the, 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 the Marauder Giant, I think, is the one that springs to a lot of people's heads. Right, head, uh, yeah, it? it's, prob- it's probably him. I, I, don't, I can't think when he well, came out, but I know who With I'm the talking. pig. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, and uh, is he holding the barrel? The he's, guy yeah, he's holding got, the barrel. He's got a barrel on the front. Yeah. He's got a pig on That's, the back. Maybe yeah. um, he was this. I was talking to someone about this the other day. He was the second metal giant. Um, right. Okay. But I was looking for I was looking for a giant um, that that su- that sort of matched that sort of aesthetic mm-hmm. for my Oath Mark army. Just purely because I wanted one like that. It doesn't necessarily fit in with any much of my army, to be fair. But that's what I wanted. Um, so I was trawling around. I couldn't find anything. There was. There is some, there is some nice giants out there, but a lot of them for me were a bit more of that sort of ogreish sort of mm-hmm. giant uh, or um, or troll type giant, and I, it weren't weren't really my cup of tea. Then I come across this company called Mom Miniatures, M O M Miniatures. They hail from Spain, mm-hmm. and I found their giant, and their giant is uh, it's called the Giant of Griffin. Um, and I picked it up, and oh my god, it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the sculpt is fantastic. And the range that they have on their site as well is so good. Um, so if you're, especially if you're looking for a, probably a Ninth Age um, Imperial Army, this 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 is the place to go there's some fantastic miniatures they've also probably got some of the nicest dwarf miniatures i've seen for a long time um they are those sort of like squatty sort of fat dwarfs but they are so so nice yeah, I, I think, think james you... the, the, i think they're the nicest range of dwarves i think i quite like the avatars of war one but i've got my mm-hmm. own problems with avatars of war um they've got that yeah that sixth edition um style and yeah, there's some really nice stuff on there. I've not browsed their website in a while. Um, they they got mentioned when I did my dwarf golem video recently. They do some dwarf golems of a very similar look. Yeah, I, I think if anyone, if you're someone who really enjoys that sort of high fantasy um, uh, GW, uh, well, Warhammer fantasy feel of your armies. This, this, that you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong over here. Uh, yes, you will be probably paying a little bit more for shipping, which is a bit of a pain in the bum, but honestly, totally worth it. So the prices the, look the, pretty sensible, to be honest. They They've are. Got, they are. Uh, the, the, the war dra- machines, twenty euros. Um, I know, what, like a dwarf crossbow, fifteen euros. So yeah, I mean, your shipping might. No, um, so guys, if you are interested uh we're very much interested we might end up buying some stuff today <laughs> um the website is www.momminiatures.com um please head over there uh because i well truly think they're really fantastic miniatures uh well worth your money so yeah, yeah have a little look um so really with that guys That's that brings end. us to the end of the show as always Throw down your comments below. Let us know what you think. Um, your comments on the main subject, please. Uh, do you play uh, out of production games? Do you enjoy it? Do you or do you only play games that are still supported with new editions? Be really, really interesting to hear what you've got to say about the matter. Um, so, yeah, hit that like like button. Please subscribe. subscribe if do you the little the bell. Subscribe. Yeah share it around as well if if you enjoyed this Please let do. everyone know um also once again this topic was uh sort of inspired by conversation on the scruffy crow discord uh yes. so if uh you've got ideas something you want us to talk about um come and uh, come and have a chat and uh, we yeah, might, definitely we please, might use please it. yeah please jump into the scruffy crow uh, uh discord but you'll be able to chat to both myself and it's Ruffy Crow himself, yeah. Big James. Um, but with that, guys, thank you very much. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for the show, guys. Bye. Bye.